What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. So I do this every now and then. I do a reaction to something that just popped up in the news uh, and stuff like that. And anyways, uh, this video that we're about to watch from Donald Trump just popped up on my Facebook feed, and I watched it already, so you're not going to see a live reaction. But I do want to break it down because he's talking about a very, very important subject, which is the drug crisis, okay? A lot of you have heard about the opioid epidemic, but he's talking about drugs as a whole. So I wanted to discuss what he's saying in here and break it down and give my thoughts on it. And I would love to hear from you and let and know what you're thinking in the comments below about what his statements are. So let's get started. The best way to beat the drug crisis is to keep people from getting hooked on drugs to begin with. All right, Trump, you got me. You got me. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening in. How do we prevent people from getting hooked in the first place? That is the question. Thank you. Thank you. First, we're taking action to reduce drug demand by... All right, reduce drug demand. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Preventing Americans from becoming addicted in the first place, so important. We're thinking about doing really a large-scale rollout of commercials that show how bad it is for the kids. <laughs> what? Commercials? All right. Okay, tell me more about these commercials, Mr. Trump. Hear them from ending up like the people in the commercials, and we'll make them very, very bad commercials. When they... <laughs> okay, so this is this is where we need to bring in science and logic and studies. They already tried this. They already tried this. Those of you watching this who are in your late 20s to early 30s like I am, like you remember Dare, you remember the Just Say No campaigns. They clearly did nothing because our generation is hooked and so is the younger generation. The the commercials do nothing. Here's why. Here's why commercials do absolutely nothing to deter kids from doing drugs. is because they see on a regular basis, okay, this is just one situation. They see on a regular basis celebrities and in culture uh, where uh, people are successful that people use drugs and drink and they're very successful and they're rich. So... As a child, you got to understand, your brain is forming. You're trying to understand the world and figure things out. And it's, it's very contradictory to what they're saying in the commercials when you see uh, famous rappers or singers or actors or anybody who is successful drinking and using drugs. Now, I am not of the belief that, you know, uh, all music influences behavior and things like that. I could do a whole video on that. That involves parenting to a very large degree. But... There was a study, okay? There was a study done about smoking, adolescent smoking. Check this out. So what they did was they started doing all these commercials about how smoking's bad, smoking's bad. They still do a bunch of those and things like that. They've kind of changed them a little bit. But anyways, they gauged the reaction from kids, and they did long-term studies to see if the kids who uh, observed these commercials were less likely to smoke. Absolutely none. None whatsoever. But then... They did another experiment where they told these kids the economics behind smoking, right? They said, these adults want you to smoke and get hooked because it makes them billions of dollars, right? And when they told the kids this, their chances of smoking dropped dramatically. Here's why. With the way the brain develops, when you're around puberty stage, right, 12 to 14 years old, okay, your brain is naturally trying to disconnect you from adults and this is part of our evolution so we are ready to leave the nest okay so when you say adults want you to smoke that gave the biggest decrease so this is one of the million reasons why scare tactics don't work all right all right donald go ahead go ahead buddy they see those commercials hopefully they're not going to be going to drugs of any kind drugs of any kind and I will tell you, this scourge of drug addiction in America will stop. It will stop. And I told China, don't send it. Ooh, okay, okay. And I told Mexico, don't send it. What? You told Mexico not to send it? Dang. 
Don't send it. Eventually, the Democrats... The, the crowd is just eating this up, just eating it up. I'm like, yeah, don't send it. That's will agree with us and will build the wall to keep the damn drugs out. Se so this wall, okay, okay, okay. First off, first off, okay. Let's talk about the wall real quick. How is the wall going to stop China from sending drugs? All right, now, now don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not in denial. I know that uh, a lot of drugs are coming in from Mexico. I know uh, part of the fentanyl issue in the United States is from China. I know this, but a wall's not going to stop China, okay? But in just a second, we're going to talk about the real issues. Sanctuary cities that shield dangerous criminals. MS-13 gang members. These are not good people, folks. He's been tripping on MS-13. Like, don't get me wrong. MS-13, there's some, there's some bad dudes, if you will. MS-13, definitely. But to, to blame the drug crisis on MS-13 and these other countries is absolutely ridiculous. Okay. These are bad, bad people. They don't use guns. They'd rather use knives because it's more painful. We continue to increase... By the way, from a psychology standpoint, like this, this is this is uh, uh, trying to influence people um, with with fear to get an agenda, right? And what's interesting is, and it's hard to explain, and maybe I'll do a video on that, is because I was just talking about how scare tactics on kids don't work, but scare tactics when it comes to politics and society, they do work. That's kind of how like propaganda works and things like that. Competition and drive down drug prices. When I'm talking about prescription drugs, not necessarily the drugs that we're talking about here. That's the problem, Donald. That is the problem. You and a lot of people, like on both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans, have sold us this idea that the drugs we're talking about are not prescription drugs, okay? Now, I have done a video that I will link up in the info card up here somewhere. I will also put it at the end screen just for you. We are being sold this lie that the drug problem is these illicit drugs. No, the drug problem is prescription drugs. Listen to me. If you have been ignoring me this entire video, please heed my words. More people die from prescription drug overdose than heroin and cocaine combined. This statistic has been around for years, and this means that it hasn't stopped at all. More people are dying from prescription drugs. Like, if you want to push some kind of agenda on decreasing the drug epidemic, it needs to start with getting these pharmaceutical companies in check, which is very, very hard because in the video that I've linked in the info card, I go through the list of all of the people, not all of the people, but most of the people who are being paid by the pharmaceutical companies. They're getting so much money from the pharmaceutical companies to push this idea that the drug problem has nothing to do with them, okay? We, even though um, people with chronic pain and people with anxiety and people with uh, attention deficit disorders, it's becoming more difficult for them to get um, these types of drugs, like, it is still a major problem. Like, I am a recovering prescription drug addict, and almost every time, almost every time I see a doctor for pain, even though I tell them I'm a, a recovering drug addict and I can't take them, they still try to push these pills on me. Like, we need to really look at the pharmaceutical and medical industries if we want to start decreasing the drug crisis. Now, I will save my next point for the second half of this video. Who knows better than the guy running the drug company, Eli Lilly? Whether you are a dealer or doctor or trafficker or a manufacturer, if you break the law and illegally peddle these deadly poisons, we will find you, we will arrest you, and we will hold you accountable. He's a terrible... Okay, so like, he did, he did include doctors there. So thank you, Mr. Trump. All right, um, I did a video a long time ago. I'll link it if I can find it. Jeff Sessions, um, one of the things that he's done is they are doing this... Uh, this kind of special task force to really monitor doctors, um, which is good. It's definitely a good thing to see if they are overprescribing and stuff like that. It is one. It is one of the only things that I agree with Jeff Sessions on. There's some other stuff that we'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, doctors really need to be held accountable with the way that they're prescribing these medications, all willy nilly. Well, people, and we have to get tough on those people, and that toughness includes the death penalty. 
the ultimate penalty has to be the death penalty. Now, maybe our country's not ready for that. It's possible. Take a look at some of these countries where they don't play games. So, like, I, I would love to know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. I would really, really love to know your thoughts on this. This is actually something one of my friends, she sent me an article about uh, last night. There were, it listed out a bunch of different cases um, where people gave somebody drugs, they died. And it wasn't like a drug dealer or anything. It was like a husband and wife, and they were both addicted to drugs. And one of them took some bad dope or took too many pills or something. Like, should that pe person be responsible for their death? And, like, I think, I think there's a lot of gray area in here. I don't think it's a black and white thing. That's one of the issues. The, uh, the war on drugs is a huge failure. That's where I disagree with Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump. Like, uh, increasing the war on drugs, like, it is ridiculous. The mandatory minimums for marijuana and all that stuff, it is insane. Especially with nonviolent offenses. Like, all that stuff needs to get rid of. Like, I just did a video about addiction being a disease um, and things like that. Like... This is the only disease where we treat people as criminals. And I, I, I'm going to do a, a video dedicated to statistics on how drug courts actually do help people. There's like a 50% success rate in most uh, cities and states that have them. Um, but locking people up instead of giving them treatment is, is brutal. So, like, in my opinion, in my opinion, and I want to hear yours down in the comments, but in my opinion, there needs to be there needs to be proof, almost like almost like the difference between murder and manslaughter. I I think that's what we need to do. Like, was it purposeful, right? Because there are drug dealers who who purposely peddle heroin with fentanyl. Um, they're starting to mix fentanyl with uh, Xanax and things like that. Like that is some intentional stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I've I've met a lot of people in recovery where part of their biggest uh, regret is that. You know, they, they helped get somebody hooked on drugs or their friend overdosed. Like, it's it's tough. And that that's a sentence in and of itself, is not being able to forgive yourself. So, so again, leave comments down below. I want to know your thoughts on the death penalty when it comes to that. They don't have a drug problem. We have the death penalty for drug dealers. We don't have a drug problem. But you know what right to try is? These are for people that are terminally ill. And they're not going to be living much longer. And we don't have the right to give them these experimental drugs for whatever reason but they say because they don't want to harm somebody if you can believe it thank you very much thank you. Yeah. so yeah i'll have to uh, i'll have to look into uh that that last part i'm not sure what he was talking about with right to try and experimental drugs maybe it's just the way now this edited it um but anyways the last the last point i'll make okay is is this two points two points actually Last one is we need to ramp up mental health care, okay? And everything I've heard about the new health care bill is trying to decrease funding for accessible, affordable mental health care. Mental illness is the leading cause of addiction. Um, so when we're talking about scaring kids out of using drugs, when you are dealing with excessive mental and emotional pain, like you are willing to take that risk. If you are dealing with PTSD, if you're dealing with BPD, if you are dealing with anxiety, depression, that pain is so great that you are willing to disregard these commercials you saw as a kid that may have scared you, right? That's one of the issues. The, the second thing is, is that we really need to look at how we're raising our kids. Um, I'm going to dedicate a lot of videos to parenting and things like that. Numerous studies, numerous studies come to the conclusion that the biggest risk, aside from like mental illness, the biggest risk for developing a, a drug addiction is your environment, your living environment, how you were raised, okay? Like, the the less your connection is with your own parents, or even if you're adopted, you're, the less your connection is with your caregivers, the higher your risk of becoming a drug addict is. It's, it's insane. Like, so part of this, aside from, like, talking about how I disagree with a lot of what Trump's doing, like, all of you out there, like, I hope you share this video, like, Parents really need to look at what they're doing. They really need to look at neglecting their children, being uh, emotionally unavailable for their children, um, you know, letting the TV and computers and video games raise their kids. Now, I'm not anti-technology in any ways. Me and my son play video games all the time. 
but there is a large parenting component that we're not addressing. We are busy pointing the fingers at everything and everybody else when a lot of this is the responsibility, responsibility of the parent. But one would argue that the lack of mental health care in this country means that we have mentally ill parents raising children who are then going to become mentally ill, which then doubles their chance of becoming a drug addict. Uh, but anyways, I'm actually making another video right after this about borderline personality disorder because I promised you all that, uh, yeah, I'm dedicating a week to things. But I just, you know what? I'm in a mood to make two videos. That's what I do. So make sure you subscribe right over there. All right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I will be making another video. I'm uploading this now. Subscribe, check in. Uh, borderline personality video coming at you. See ya.